Okay, so now we had tasted the wine. We were talking about how it was much, much uh, bigger body than the Tempranillo. Uh, still had those cab characteristics. And uh, now let's see what it does with the food. Do we want to go? Where, where, where do we want to go here? Do we want to try? We were going to say, let's try. Oh, why not? Yeah, because yeah, that rosemary was so. So you have something besides that Sauvignon Blanc can stand up to this chip. <laughs> the wine chip. You know what that does to this wine? Hmm. In Australia, there's a great deal of eucalyptus, and it brings out a little piece of that. It does. Yeah. Um, I'm still shocked. The Savion Blanc was the best wine with this chip. Yep. I mean, bar none. And that was the mellow chip. That yes. wasn't even the big salty chip. Yes, yes. Okay, so, meat time? Yeah, I think meat. Yes. And you know, yeah. cab and steak. <laughs> You're, you're, they're kind of made for each other, so let's see what happens here. Mm. Can't go wrong. You know, and even though, you know, one thing I didn't mention about this cab is it's not a huge tannin, you know, grab you kind of by the, by the throat kind of cab um, but even though you can't detect them a lot when you're tasting them they're still it's obvious they're present when you get this when you taste the steak with it because they really combine together and they they work and it just it just works right I mean, absolutely and you get this little like kirsch almost at the end mm -hmm. when you add the meat so it richens up yep. the wine yep all right now chocolate Chocolate and cab, like another one I like is chocolate and Syrah, I think are, are mm -hmm. good combos. Um, but let's look at chocolate the- Chocolate and Merlot. Chocolate and Merlot. Chocolate and Zin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go on. Chocolate okay, so in. let's- uh, New World, has to be New World though. Yeah, all right, so this is a 70%. I'm already eating. Some out of wine. Uh -oh. much better you know it worked with the uh, with the uh, Tempranillo and then you try it with the Zen and every time you try it you try it with the cab and you're like oh mm -hmm. that's right there's one more surprising marriage in wine and food that I love and it's a new tannic young cab and blue cheese Oh, really? Delicious. And I'm not a big blue cheese fan because it's such a big, powerful flavor. But in the same way, they counteract each other. It's really an interesting pairing. I recommend a, a show on it. Works for me. <laughs> the blue cheese show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now what, what do you think of the 70% the in the cab? Mm. And this, this cab, because it's from Australia, has, you know, it's a big fat, not super tannic, like you're saying. And it can handle the sweetness mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. I think if we had a, t a cab from perhaps Sonoma, Alexander Valley, or Napa, we might find that we need a little bit darker. Yeah. So okay. let's, let's keep going So dark. let's go. So now we're going to go with the 90%, yeah. the chalk. This is like eating dirt. No. I, was outside, I was outside making a sign on the cement with this one. <laughs> That's right. No, oh, it's almost painful without <laughs> It's overpowers that wine. The chocolate? I think the chocolate is so big and so much that the wine disappears. You know, it, uh, you know, at my first taste, I was like, it works, but then the chocolate, it does. It, it just kicks it in just, right just, here, and it just it overpowers it, and it's like I may as well have been drinking water because it's just gone. And and maybe a more expensive wine, but this or I maybe maybe one that that shows a little bit more of those tannins that mm -hmm. that shows a little bit. Yeah, that, that is a little bit bigger. Or port. Or port, yes. Because it's well, you sweet. Know what? I, I, think, I, don't, I don't know if I agree with that, so I think we need to open one up. <laughs> <laughs> you get the cut to run. I'll get the port. We'll be back up. <laughs> that must be for another show. That must be. <laughs> but um, here's what I recommend. What about something in between 70 and 90? Is there a chocolate that we can find that's a little bit 
less oh, dry. Yeah. Yes, yes. But not so dry that it hurts you. Yeah. That's like an 80% would probably be. Deep. There we go, right in the middle. Yep. Or a 75 even, yep. just a baby step. Yep. So that's, that's okay. Um, so. And, uh, you know, it's great for us to sit here and talk about it because we're tasting it and you're watching this saying, okay, whatever. Mm. <laughs> so all I can do is just recommend trying these kinds of things. Um, you know, go to restaurants, see if they have wine flights that you can have with food, um, order a couple glasses. Maybe if you're going out with two of you, each have a different glass and try it with different fruits because it is, it is amazing how wine and food can combine together just to create um, you know something special something really extraordinary and it really is what kind of got me into wine in the first place I was interested in wine but when I had that first kind of wow I get it now I get what wine and food pairings are all about that was really started me on my obsession so and you know what the epiphany of oh my gosh wine and food it always seems to happen to me with old world wine absolutely with european question, wines yes. because those are the ones you're like yeah what's the big deal oh i get it yeah. you know uh, yeah. aha yeah. so okay all right so um aaron you know, i'm gonna put you on the spot now i i always ask folks a question for the okay. show okay. to try to spur comments okay you know and this is going on the vintages site as well as the lonely vine site so <laughs> What, so you have free reign to ask them anything you want. It can be about wine or it cannot be about wine. But ask them yes. anything I want. Okay. Yes. And they will hopefully, hopefully come and leave comments responding to your question. Okay, here we go. We're going to politics. Oh, no. <laughs> you asked for it. Yeah, I'm glad so I don't have which, to answer. Which presidential candidate or president do you think will be better for the wine industry? That's an interesting question. I guess it would be who would who would work to open up borders more? To open up wine, you know, I think of these poor people in Pennsylvania who yes. only can go to state stores. Yes. Right. With so so I get so uh, so I guess what we're saying, and yes, there was a little bit of an edit thing there. We had somebody come in that kind of surprised us, so we had to kind of shut it off. Um, so I guess the real question that we're asking is, what is a better pairing? Uh, for your candidate, your, your the, the candidate and the wine, which one is a better pairing? Um, good luck if that if if that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> Politics and religion? What? We're not supposed yes, to go. Yes, we're not supposed place. to talk about those yeah. things. So, but here we especially go. when we're drinking. Just jump <laughs> right in and give us your. Yes. Advice. So which which candidate pairs better with wine? That's and here's okay. Here's my next challenge to you. So the next time you come into vintages, yes, let's pair wine cheese because it's yes. not so easy yes it's, it's not it's not okay we, it's not so easy okay we'll do that so the next time we're going to be pairing uh wine with cheese so thank you aaron salute salute and until next time everybody cheers